Hi, I'm Lou. Today on Auto Darts, do you ever feel like one mag and one magwell isn't enough? Well, the Chelsea has got you covered. Let's get going. <laughs> This is the Chelsea Ray. The Chelsea Ray is a dual magwell Talon Mag flywheel powered blaster. It features two independent flywheel systems powered by Flywheel the World. So inside we've got micro wheels. The motors are oriented one, two, three, and four. It's got two independent barrels that fire at the same time, and it is driven by a Flywheel the World solenoid in the back. This thing is one of the more unique blasters I have seen in a while. This was sent to me by John Mags, as he's known, and uh, I wanted to say thank you for sending this over to check out. Um, I did not purchase this, so keep that in mind, but I am giving this back or passing it on to the next reviewer, rather. The Chelsea Ray name comes from the fangs on Arachnid, uh, and this is something that John had to point out, the designer himself, because I didn't know that from the default but it's kind of a cool play on words because the blaster strikes twice each time you fire it, just like the fangs. I love getting to check out other designers' aesthetic and design approach and 3D printing because there's always something you can learn from somebody else. And this is certainly a unique blaster. It's got a single trigger pull, rev, rev fire. It's a semi-automatic blaster with the solenoid, of course, but each trigger pull fires one dart from each of your magazines. Um, it's, of course, Talon short dart only, which is, at this point, probably my favorite ammo type. Uh, it's got a few other unique features, which I'll go over here, and it's quite the unique blaster. Starting from the basics, it features a fairly large battery compartment in the back. We've got room for, easily fits a 1500 milliamp hour pack, but I think you could probably cram a 2200 in there if you wanted. In the back, we've got a standard voltage meter and down in the grip well here, grip guard, we've got a three switches here, which are independent for turning on the various features. Uh, the very last one is, or the very first one is the voltage readout, so I can turn that on and off if you don't want to look at that. The medium one is the front firing light up muzzle which I think is a really, really nice touch. I would love to be playing at night and see this blinking at you as you're getting uh, chased down by some zombies or something like that. And then the last one is the top slide, which when it revs, we've got this animated LED. <laughs> and I think that combined effect is really, really cool. When you rev up the blaster. Now, given this is a solenoid, the rate of fire is quite decent. I think I could pull off about seven or eight rounds a second. So you're gonna dump these magazines fairly quickly. It is semi-automatic, but the trigger feels very, very good. It's very snappy. And overall, it seems to perform fairly well. Performance is in the 120 to 130 range. We'll put the actual 20 shot average up on the screen here. Uh, for the average, we'll just chronograph one barrel so we don't get any misreads coming from both at the same time. The blaster has kind of a unique uh, aesthetic. It's very blocky, very sort of uh, futuristic, cyberpunk kind of feel to it. Up top, we've got all these massive heat sinks, which kind of give it like that railgun aesthetic. All of this is just uh, cosmetic. It's not, uh, it's, the heat sinks aren't actually doing anything. It's really just there for the you know visual aesthetic of the blaster. For the flywheel motor leads, we've actually got external ones which kind of add to that aesthetic. And I think it's kind of a very successful approach because it is very unique from everything else. I think there's some nice detailing around the blaster, but it is a very blocky, chunky feel overall. Now I'm sure some of you are thinking, why won't you throw the Tachi mags in there? Unfortunately, it looks like the shape of the pusher is a little too wide to fit through our feed lip properly. So it doesn't seem like these are directly compatible. Um, I can occasionally get some shots off. But I think when you've got both pushers moving at the same time, when you've got two loaded, 
it, the uh, catch is great, but at times it doesn't want to uh, get both of the uh, followers into the uh, magwell. So maybe the follower could just be redesigned and made a little smaller, and that would probably solve the issue. <laughs> That said, it doesn't have to work with my mags to be super cool. I think it's a really interesting blaster. The ergonomics of it do leave a little bit to be desired. As a lot of you know, I'm kind of obsessed with ergonomics, and this really comes down to personal preference. I expect the uh, designer, John, his hands are probably a little smaller than mine. It's this thing that keeps classically happening. But if you look where my hands rest, I, I literally just cannot, I can't put my pinky into um, the trigger well here, the uh, grip well, because it, it, if I do it, then the actual uh, rev switch will hit my index finger. So I kind of have to hold it like this, which is a little, a little uh, awkward uh, overall. But again, if you had smaller hands, it would probably feel just fine. And I expect this is very comfortable for the creator's hands because you're always going to design stuff for yourself first. John told me that this was his fourth blaster that he's designed. And it's a completely original blaster, everything built from the ground up. And I think that's really cool. I love seeing different approaches like this and unique approaches with a dual magwell. Uh, I had this actually before the Hasbro Blaster came out that's got two magwells, so it, um, we've been holding on this review for a little while. I have to say I really, really like the magwell tolerances on this blaster. It is rock solid with both this mag and with our Tachi mags. There are a lot of different approaches on the actual magwell tightness, and a couple of you may remember when I did my Pyara video, it's got a pretty sloppy magwell, and um, so much so that they, they frequently drop out. Um, and, and, on the, and on our Tachi mags occasionally have issues catching, but it's just pretty sloppy as far as tolerance. This is really rock solid. It seems like they've really got the tolerance, John's really got the tolerance down, and yet they still, still gravity drop, which is really, really nice. Like there's no extra play in here. They're not wobbling around any more than necessary yet it still can do an actual gravity drop. So really took the time to make the tolerances right on that mag well and make sure that the mag release was strong enough. I, I like seeing that a lot. In the end, I think this is a really unique blaster. This hobby has just become absolutely amazing. I, I think it's like every other week we get a new blaster and seeing things like this that aren't just copies of stuff that's already been out is probably my favorite part of all of it. Thank you so much for sending this to me, John. I really appreciate it. Hope you all enjoyed a look at this blaster. If I had to give this a rating, I'd say four out of five stars just for uniqueness alone. There are some minor tweaks and things I would do here um, cosmetically and just uh, ergonomically as far as my hands. But again, that's as always very, very personal and it's going to vary depending on you and your ergonomics and sizing of your hands. Lots more to come. We are toning back the reviews, trying to do only a single review each month and then focus more on mod content, behind the scenes and original designs. Until next time, I'm out of darts.